Howdy and welcome to the show. Today we're going to pull apart a Kindle, the uh, third generation Kindle with the keyboard, sometimes referred to as the Kindle keyboard. Uh, this one has a cracked screen. Uh, rather than replace the screen, which you can get for around about $30 to $40, you can actually buy a brand new Kindle seventh generation white, um, the uh, white ink they call it I think and uh, all of that for around $100, $120. So it's really not worth spending $40 on this that's fairly old at the moment. But what I do want to do is have a look inside, take a walk around, and if I can, pull the battery and the charging circuit that might go with that and have a look what else in there that might be re uh, reusable. Let's take a look. All right, as you can see, yeah, uh, crack screen on this Kindle. The rest of it's in excellent condition because it wasn't used all that much before the screen was cracked. Um, no screws on the back, so what you do is you lever out this uh, section here, and I've just started to do it. As you can see, just there. All you need to do is a little case opening tool or a very, very fine screwdriver. If you're using a fine screwdriver, just be careful because if you jam it in there, there is a circuitry just in behind. All you do is just need to get in there with a little bit lever it out and then just follow uh, around and it will start to pop open. You don't need a whole heap of force, just got to make sure that you get in between the backing plate and the frame. All right, and as you can start to see, starting to get quite a bit of leverage now. And they're quite tight, but they are just plastic snaps. And there you go. One Kindle. All right. Now let's take a look around. Lots of sealed components behind shielding. All of these in their own little shielded area. Uh, these Kindles do have Wi-Fi, so obviously there is some form of um, RF shielding required. And there's the headphone jack and power buttons and things down the bottom. And there's also the uh, USB sync and charge port, and that one uh, I am interested in. But it goes directly onto the board, which is what I suspected, meaning that uh, everything here, including the charge circuit, for the Kindle uh, is integrated, so it's not something that's a module, and you wouldn't expect it to be. Um, all right, so not a whole heap more. This is the battery. So we've got a 3.7 volt, 1750 milliamp, 6.7 um, watt hour lithium polymer battery. Definitely reusable. Um, and you can get uh, charging circuits for these without too much difficulty from places like uh, Little Bird Electronics or JCAR and many others um, and just have a look uh, and I'll actually be grabbing one myself and using this battery with one of those little charging modules in another project. Alright so I'll pop a couple of these components out and let's take a closer look. So the first reusable part, possibly the only reusable part in here, uh, is the battery I just already talked about. Um, some simple connectors, so the standard four pole, hopefully you can see that there. Uh, lithium ion batteries, positive and negative as you would suspect, and normally there is um, a third and sometimes a fourth pole for uh, communications more than anything else so that there is a, a normally a thermistor uh, sometimes integrated into the battery to tell the circuit controlling the battery charge whether things are getting too hot uh, and some sort of other communications to let the device know uh, its state of charge uh, and uh, condition in general depending on how sophisticated things get but that's what the third and the fourth poles are typically used for. Okay we'll just continue to uh, 
pull down this Kindle. I'll start with this module here. It's fairly firmly affixed to the motherboard. Um, I can remove it. Okay. Looks like just a spacer or potentially uh, another module that could have been installed in the device. Maybe some more communications. This one uh, from memory doesn't have any um, 3G supports, just a pure Wi-Fi. So it's possible that something else went in where this module would go. But that was just stuck down. And there's definitely nothing else to it. It's just plastic. Well, let's go aside. Keep taking out some screws. Um, I am guessing as well that on the back side here where the keyboard is, uh, it'll be just a little mini dome version baked onto the actual board itself and again, nothing that's reusable. But we'll take a look anyway. Okay, some form of contacts on the back of this module here and on there four contacts and it does affix to you can see where it came from the board here um, don't know what this was for however it's very familiar to the size of uh, a sim module and this might be just bridging um, some form of connection going through there don't know but there is a slot of sorts that I've not seen before going through there uh, to touch two of those pins and connecting that through to the motherboard down here. Might just require a bit more investigation on that one. And there shouldn't be any screws In the bottom half, however, these buttons being connected through, etc., will make um, the board a little tricky to remove. We should we just be able to lift? And then I would think we would need to bring this forward. Connector going through there, through to the front, and that is already disconnected. And you've got a lot of these plastic posts. Hopefully, you can see that. We'll just get a quick zoom in. Those plastic posts, there's a few of those over the motherboard as well, uh, and obviously, they're um, helping keep it in place. You need to make sure you're over those. You've got some form of resistance in this corner. From other connectors, you've got a large ribbon cable connector here. There you go. Oh, so that little header is clipped in. The re removal of this is fold back. And that's it, pretty much. You've got another one over here. So there we go. One Kindle version 3 mainboard. Uh, not a lot to it. Very, very uh, small components. Well, 0 0.5, 0 0.65 pitch, whatever these ones are. Um, very nicely done. And these shields. Uh, very, very firmly affixed, but they should be removable because I'm not seeing any permanent fixtures coming through to the back. Huge external plane. Let's have a quick look at these shields and see if, whether or not we can get these off and see what's underneath. Okay. See if we can get a little bit of leverage on one of these shields. 
Oh, I need to get the soldering iron out. Alright, chip under here. And I'll just do brute force. Okay, don't know much about that one. That's chip number one. So, there you have it. Kindle motherboard. Uh, quite a few uh, major packages on there. And a fairly densely packed board. I suppose they do quite a bit, so uh, yeah, there you go. But uh, not usable for me. So we'll carry on with the uh, rest of the Kindle. There's a few uh, case edge screws there. It's probably the uh, e-ink display just there. I dare say that's what it is. If we pop these screws out, the rest should come fairly easily. Another one at the end here. Let's get into those now. Okay, so this lifts out fairly easily so far. Yep. Nothing to it, no force required. And that is the uh, keyboard controller by the look of it. Alright, so there's the keyboard membrane. And single ribbon connector there. Baked all onto this. Don't think there's going to be much I can do with that. Um, I'll have a little boat peep a bit later, but uh, yeah, I don't think that's going to be reusable. Alright, let's get that aside. And here's the uh, actual ink display. You can see that lovely crack through there that's allowed it with all the fluids inside to go everywhere. Controller and keyboard membrane. Pretty much all we've got left. So that is just sitting in there on these lugs. There's the lovely little keyboard membrane. And for a little thumb keyboard, when this was working in a little, uh, like a D-pad there, um, that was quite good. Okay. And the bottom half of that screen, if you're ever doing a screen replacement, so the screen was in here like this. Um, all of this was easy to take out, but the bottom half of the screen here, uh, it's a mild, you can probably just see a bit of that sheen, I hopefully hear it. Uh, that's just adhesive, uh, and there's a little bit around all of the edges but the main sticky part is going to be down the bottom here so if you are doing a uh, screen replacement and you're coming in through the back which I think is the only way you're going to do this um, yep that is a sticky section oh there you go and of course the great thing about e-ink displays is uh, without power they maintain the, uh, the last image burned onto them Well, there you go, uh, a Kindle third generation teardown. Uh, for me personally, there's not a lot that I'm going to get from that, but I will be using um, that battery. That's a fairly thin little battery. Uh, it does have a bit of size to it, but a fairly thin little battery and uh, with the right uh, connections and controllers, which I can easily get hold of, uh, that will work in a, another future project. So there you go, Kindle third generation torn down. So thanks very much for joining me and watching the show. 
subscribers are always welcome, so feel free to subscribe, that would be great. And I hope you'll join me again next week.